Hi everyone, time for another tutorial. Today we're gonna take a look at Vincent by Don McLean. Uh, before we start out, I wanna make clear that this is not the Chet Atkins arrangement. Um, this is my own arrangement. Uh, I actually arranged this song without uh, realizing or knowing that Chet Atkins had a version as well. I had the chance to play this arrangement quite a few years ago uh, for Tommy Emanuel and he actually liked it, uh, he gave me a few pointers on how to improve it. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to explain how I played it uh, on the original recording that's on YouTube as well, but at the back of the video I'm going to show you Tommy Emanuel uh, suggested to add one little extra detail uh, in the last verse and I'm going to show you uh, what he played for me. It uh, was quite a special um, experience uh, playing an arrangement for him that he didn't know um, in a different key than he was used to hearing uh, from Chet Atkins. And right after finishing uh, playing the arrangement, he played it back at me uh, with a lot of the more intricate parts and adding his own uh, twist on, on what he thought it would uh, at what he thought would sound better. So it was an, an amazing eye-opening experience. So let's get to work. Uh, the very first thing you have to do is drop down the low E string down to a low D and you're good to go. No uh, sp uh, further alternate tuning is needed, so we're just in basic drop D, low D, A string, D string, G string, B, and E. So only a low drop D. Throughout the tutorial I will be using a hybrid picking uh, all the way through, so I'm used to playing this arrangement with a pick along uh, with my fingers, but it's perfectly possible to play this arrangement as well, just using traditional finger style, uh, using a thumb pick or just using no pick at all and just playing uh, with uh, the fingers on the right hand. So here we go. So we're starting out um, straight away with the melody. <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a sore throat today, so uh, I hope I get through this. So here we go. So we are starting out with 2nd fret on the G string, to the 4th fret, 3rd fret on the B string, and then, maybe a bit strange, pinky for the 5th fret. So if you play it in position, some people play it like this, and then to the pinky and slide up. This is what I usually do, like the, the major pentatonic position, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, and then sliding up to the 7th fret, to the F sharp. And that's where we will add the low D bass note. Open D string, 7th fret on the G string. Fifth fret on the G string to the fourth fret on the G string. So this is basically moving from a sus chord to a major chord. different arrangement as well, a, a little open string lick, so F sharp on the 7th fret, to an open E string, to 7th fret on the G string, to an open B string. And make sure these notes overlap so you get this harpy uh, effect. I'm gonna play the low E string with the thumb on the second fret. But if that's not possible for you, you can just as well play it with the first finger as well. So we're ending up. 
open G string and then hammering on to the second fret and ending up on an open B string. F sharp fourth fret on the, on the D string, moving to the open G string and back. Ending up on with the thumb, it's, it's not really visible, but with the thumb on the, on the second fret and the index finger as well on the second fret of the D string, all the other strings are open. If you play it without the thumb, this is what it would, would look like, which is just an uh, E minor chord with uh, the second fret in the bass note because of the uh, drop D tune. So, up to this point, you get this. part in uh, sixth intervals. So seventh fret on the D string, seventh fret on the B string, sliding down both to the fifth fret, then fourth fret on the D string, third fret on the B string, and then a pull off to two open strings. If you want to just plug the, the just as well play it. It's possible as well. So this is what you get. So fifth fret on the low E string, fifth fret on the B string, moving to the melody note on the seventh fret. Ending up on open B string. Open E string to end the bar and then we're heading back into one of those little open string legs. So we're gonna play open A string, four, uh, seventh fret sorry on the G string, pulling off to the sixth fret, open B string to the seventh fret on the D string, back to the open B string, back to the 6th fret, hammering onto the 7th fret, and an open E string. And back to the first opening chord. So this is what you get starting from the previous bar. Again, if you're playing this, this open string lick, let uh, the, the different melody notes overlap. Just leave them ringing out. So you get, again, this little harpy effect. That's the whole first bit. So the, the, that's the first vocal line or the first melody part, if you want to call it that. So let's go over it one uh, time in its entirety. straight away again with the same melody uh, line we saw in the beginning of the song. second time is the melody note uh, which we use to close down the section. So the first time you get to the F sharp, second time you get to the D note. Again, 
7th fret but on the G string instead of on the B string. And then we're gonna head into the second uh, melodic part, uh, if you want to call it that, the chorus or the pre-chorus. And we're starting back out with uh, sixth intervals. So fourth fret, third, fourth fret on the D string, sorry. Third fret on the G string, uh, on the B string. Hammering on to the fifth fret. You can also play them, just play them without using the hammer on part. To the seventh fret and back to fourth fret and third fret. Or, as I like to play it. So using that melody line, we're going to end up in an E minor chord. And sliding into an A, a dominant seventh chord. Fourth fret, open G string, third fret on the B string. And then using that third fret to slide into the A chord. Basic A dominant seven chord. So open string, second fret, third fret, and back to the open string. So you end up on the D chord and then straight to an open E string for the melody. C sharp in the bass, B for the bass. And then you're in, ending up with a, a partial B minor chord. So second fret, fourth fret on the G string, third fret on the B string. string, third fret on the B string, and an open string to end up on. Back to that same E minor chord with F sharp on top this time, second fret on the high E string. Same movement as we saw in the previous bar, so fourth fret, open G string, third fret on the B string, sliding into the A seventh chord. Drop the B minor chord, just leave it empty for the little pickup in the melody line. Big difference, E major chord this time instead of an E minor chord. So we get second fret on the low E string, second fret on the D string, first fret on the G string, and then just two open strings. Second fret on the high E string and an open string for the last melody note. So and then we move to E minor. So this is the part you get. So first.
first you get an E major chord with the first fret on the G string. Open G string and then we're moving back to second part so so you start from the E major chord E minor chord back to that little A added ninth chord shape hammering on sixth fret to the seventh fret open E string back again to the sixth fret and when you hammer on to this melody note try to get the low D bass note at the same time. See? And with that little fill, we conclude the second part. So let's play everything up until this point. I'm gonna try and go over it slowly so you can follow along with the tablature and maybe pick up some pointers you missed along the explanation. Here we go. pointer there is one fingering I play differently in this version uh, which is uh, this one this is what I play this is what I always used to play when tabbing out uh, uh, the parts for this arrangement I actually found that this is a lot easier to play so instead of using this very wide chord, 2nd fret, 5th fret, 5th fret, you can just use these open strings but once in a while the habit just takes hold of me and I play it like I always did so feel free to use whatever version you like but the version I explained uh, earlier on is easier. So the good news is we got both melody parts uh, down now and now in the original song this is just repeated so the second time around we're gonna start back with the same thing uh, we used to start out the song with and we're gonna play all the way through yet again i'm gonna do it a bit more up to tempo now to give you a feel for what it sounds like when you once you pick it up So, 
the second verse and second chorus are identical to the first verse and chorus. Uh, as you can hear, or as you hopefully picked up uh, while I was playing through this the second time, feel free to uh, play around with the tempo. So the original uh, recording is far from played uh, on a click track. So uh, it slows down, it speeds back up. So you make sure to use that uh, in your own interpretation as well. So and when I'm playing uh, the repeat of, of the first melody line, I'm not playing it uh, really uh, solid clockwise uh, in terms of timing. So I'm not just doing... Stretching it out a little bit. as a classical musician would say, really play with the tempo on this one. There's no need to really get it uh, onto a click, onto a metronome. Super tight timing-wise, just play around with it. It feels better, it sounds better, it makes for a more musical performance as well. So now we're on to the third part, the bridge, which is something completely different than the first two sections. So here we go. So it's a bit of a strange beginning. So first melody note is an open E string. Then play it again with second fret on the low E string as well. Fourth fret, second fret, sorry, fourth fret on the low E string, second fret on the high E string. And then back to this chord we already played at, an E minor chord, second fret on the low D string, second fret on the high E string. This is nothing new either, we already saw this in the previous section. And then, this is the difference, we're moving up to the high A note now, 5th string on the high E string. same movement we saw in, in the second melodic section of the song as well. So we're ending up on the high A note, fifth fret, with a D chord underneath. C sharp, fourth fret on the A string as a B note, uh, as a bass note. Second fret on the A string as a bass note. And then we're moving up to the higher melody section. So from this part, chord on the 2nd fret, A and F sharp on the top string, so 2nd fret on the G string, 2nd fret on the high E string, 3rd fret on the high E string, 4th fret on the G string, and we're going to move that up 2 frets to the 5th fret and the 6th fret. Then we're moving to a low open A string. D chord, ending up on an E minor chord on the 7th fret, just a standard 
bar chord with the root on the fifth string. Most of Europe probably recognize this shape. So, and we're keeping the bar chord down the whole time while moving around the melody. So the melody is seventh fret on the high E string. Pinky and the middle finger to play this melody. Just to try to keep most of the E minor chord down. Then to a G minor chord, which is going to be a bit of a bigger uh, chord shape. Low G on the fifth fret because of the drop D tuning, and a bar chord at the third fret and. We're not even finished yet. A high B flat on the high E string for the melody note. So what you get this. So that's the middle section. intervals to play the melody with. And we're ending up in a B dominant 7th chord. 7th fret on the G string and the high E string. Open D bass note. Then 6th fret on the G string, 5th fret on the high E string. Down 2 frets. note in the bass, so what you're getting is a D chord with a C in the bass. Ending up on a B7 chord. Most of the fingerings aren't that difficult, but what is the challenge is to um, keep everything ringing out, to keep everything smooth while changing to these different chord shapes. Should look familiar by now. So, the second fret on the low E string. And this is the hardest part. You're going to have to play a lot of sixth, sixth intervals yet again for the melody while keeping down the low G on the bass note with the pinky. Uh, because of the drop D tuning, it's quite easy to, to push this out of tune. So be very careful with that one. The fingerings are mostly the same. Fourth fret, third fret on the G and E string, to a bar chord on the second fret, to an open string, to the same fingerings, one string uh, down on the D string and on the B string. Most of the work will be in the pinky, keeping the pinky down, keeping the bass note ringing out and making sure you, you're not twisting at it out of, um, out of tune while playing all those sixth intervals. So. And then to an open A string, which is going to be a lot easier in the bass. part is and then we're ready to play the next melodic section which will look quite familiar it's almost the same as the first two sections um, with one little uh, melodic twist uh, let's play the whole bridge just to make sure you got everything down so 
starting from uh, the beginning. Once you end up there, straight again, pick up for the melody notes and we're back into the first part we learned. that makes a difference. Just as we enter uh, the next part, first time we play this, and we were off, now we're gonna do this. It's not that hard, especially with what you already played in the bridge, so... And then moving over to the G string and the high E string, 4th fret, 3rd fret, for the melody variation, oh, resolving to two open strings. thing we're doing is we're moving up to the high uh, A note for yet another melodic variation uh, and the rest of the piece is identical all the way to the finish so um trick we talked about this in another arrangement as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finger certain note and then I'm gonna mirror that one 12 frets higher point at it with the index finger while playing I'm gonna try and make this clear on the other camera while playing the the harmonic with the pick so that's what's happening so if you, you can try this on the 12th fret as well point at the 12th fret then use the pick underneath your index finger to play like this, to play the, uh, the harmonic note. And we're going to use the harp technique made popular by Tommy Emanuel and I think he was inspired by Lenny Bra. And it sounds like this, so it's again the same melodic pickup. Seventh fret along with the bass note, artificial harmonic at the 19th fret on the A string, regular note on the B string, seventh fret, artificial harmonic on the 19th fret, regular note on the high E string, 10th fret, and then I'm adding 
on the ninth fret, the high E, and then you have to move over. I don't have any flat frets left, so I have to sort of calculate where this harmonic should be to get that high E harmonic as well. And then we will conclude with a, a D major at the ninth chord. The whole, the whole of Vincent. So as you see, as you saw, as you, when you got the first part under your fingers, the second part and the last part are com almost identical to each other. They're just repeated, with the only exception being that little melodic fill in the last verse. And the bridge is something different altogether. So the bridge is actually, to me, the hardest part to play with a few difficult fingerings, especially with that. Uh, low G bass note on the pinky while all, all those sixth intervals are moving around on top. So I promised you one more thing that is when I played this arrangement for Tommy Emanuel, he liked it. Uh, I might even try to get the video uh, to edit it in where he actually uh, gives his uh, comments on what I just played. But he also suggested one little variation um, in the last a uh, bit, instead of always just playing the pickup of the melody line like this, he uh, suggested to add a little harmony uh, based on the Moldur um, uh, harmonic variation. And instead of always playing this, He suggested to add in somewhere along uh, by the end of the song to play this uh, one of those times. So let's try and add that into the rest of the song. So the first time you're playing this. So that was something he came up with on the spot. He, was, he told me, well, this would actually sound nice if you add it in somewhere later in the song. Uh, this was after I already put my versions on YouTube. So I, this time I did the tutorial exactly like the versions I already posted. But if you want to add this in, you've got uh, Tommy Emmanuel's blessing to do so. So I hope you have fun with this one and uh, check back soon. Uh, see you next time.